गुड मॉर्निंग एवरी वन दिस इज अजेंटेशन रिगार्डिंग अ मल्टी डिसिप्लिनरी अप्रोच एंड एयरवे स्ट्रेटेजी इन अ केस ऑफ रेट्रोस्टर्नल क्वेटर दिस केस वॉज डन बाय डॉक्टर सुजीत खाड़े सर डॉक्टर विजय दवंडे सर एंड डॉक्टर हर्षल बोरगावकर मैडम एट कृपा माई हॉस्पिटल आई वुड लाइक टू थ्रो लाइट ऑन रेट्रोस्टर्नल गॉइटर रेट्रोस्टर्नल गॉइटर इज एयरवे मैनेजमेंट ऑफ पेशेंट अंडर गोइंग थारोडेक्टोमी फॉर रेट्रोस्टर्नल गॉइटर बज इज अ वेरी यूनिक चैलेंजेस एज सर हेज ऑलरेडी मेन्शन Airway compromise during induction, intubation, and intraoperatively as well as perioperative period is a difficult task. Also, there is a manipulation of airway by the surgeon can contribute to the adverse events. By definition, if you look for retrosternal goiter, there are two authentic definitions. The first one is a thyroid with a lower margin below the thoracic inlet. and second one says that when the thyroid nodule is more than 50% of the gland is below the thoracic inlet both definitions are justified the incidence of uh, retrosternal goiter is ranges from 0.02 to 15% why we are concerned about the retrosternal goiter so much because whenever the patient comes with retrosternal goiter they may land up come with a varied of symptoms of respiratory compromise mostly mild symptoms like dyspnea cough choking sensation and orthopnea and in severe respiratory symptomatic patient you may have strider respiratory distress and superior vena cava syndrome the risk of malignancy ranges from 18 to 23% in such patient according to the location retrosternal goiter are classified as anterior substernal goiters or posterior substernal goiters thus the approach surgical approach may vary depending upon the location of the goiter and even the grading grade 1 retrosternal goiter are those which are located above the aortic arch that is above the t4 level and the approach may be cervical surgical incision may be cervical in grade 2 retrosternal goiter it may be aortic arch to pericardium and approach will be manubrectomy and in grade 3 it will be below the right atrium where full sternotomy need to be performed compression over the vital structure is the major effect under seen by this retrosternal goiter they may compress trachea esophagus and major vessels hence patient may come up with the symptoms as per the structure compressed the surgical approach as i have previously told either it is a cervical incision or a sternotomy or a thoracotomy if it turns out to be a thoracotomy then it turns to be a supra major case anesthesia concern Concerns are proper evaluation and assessment of the patient, investigating the patient thoroughly, and proper planning of anesthesia even in the perioperative period. So, in preoperative assessment, apart from the routine and evaluation, there one must uh, look for the typical clinical signs and syndrome. There may be a superior vena cava syndrome that is puffiness of face, facial edema, compression of the trachea. Patient may land up in strider, cough, choking sort of sensations. So, we need to investigate the patient thoroughly with the routine blood investigation. patient we may include thyroid function test chest x ray and ct or mri if the patient comes in strider and you need to do the ct it is really very difficult if a call given to you for sedation as the patient cannot lie down and it will be another challenge for an anesthesiologist so proper planning of retrosternal goit or how to proceed our anesthesia is very very essential either looking for the size of the retrosternal goit or one may plan in regional anesthesia or one may go ahead with general anesthesia even with general anesthesia you may think of tiva or inhalation agent or intubation if there is a difficulty you may plan for awake intubation or post induction intubation if it is again there are itself a challenge of intubation drill as of uh, difficulty in intubation there are challenges for difficult extubation as well so one must take that there are no complications in the extubations and one must be very meticulous while extubating the chances of trachomalacia are very very high post of complication like current laryngeal nerve injury bleeding or edema should also be considered thus traditional anesthetic managing warns us about the difficulty in airway management in such type of patients and more with the obstructive retrosternal mass so the potential risk is during bag and mass ventilation tracheal intubation difficulty to with positive pressure ventilation which attributes to the tracheal compression and deviation as well as post operative complication which i have narrated and trachomalacia is the biggest hurdle first just to throw certain highlight on the retrosternal goiter now i'll share the case she was a 55 years old female she came in an emergency department in strider there was a history of thyroid nodule since 2017 she was harboring this node since 2017 which was very smaller in size and now suddenly she came in a compression syndromes with breathlessness and can not lie down 
strider were very very significant there was no other comorbidity to the patient on examination local examination gives us a very brief idea that the swelling was very very prominent the lower margin or border was not palpable there was dilated superficial neck vents airway was mouth opening was good mpc was two and neck extension was good this was all suggestive of a compression symptoms in vitals patient was tachycardic tachypneic and agitated as well as rest restless because of strider vitals pulse rate was 120 beat per minute bp was stable saturation was 93 percent on room air with oxygen at six liters per hour she was in a complete 90 degree propped up position systemic examination again tachycardia tachypnea striders and very conducted sounds and V's. The rest of the systems were within normal limit. Investigation wise, lab investigations were within normal limit except potassium which was 2.9 and correction was given. Serum calcium was 8 mg per deciliter which was normal but bit on the lower side of the normal. Check history suggestive of increase in the right para tracheosternal opacity suggestive of superior mediastinal pathology. Turi eco and ECG were within normal limit. So if you look at the reports, this uh, in 2017 it was a very small node on which she was harboring and as of now she came came with a huge mass and the swelling that is 4.6 into 3.7 which was compressing and deviating the trachea and even uh, to the left side greater vessels were compressed and displaced without any enhancement and left lobe and on the isthmus even there was a bilateral consolidation of the middle and the lower lobe that's why she was having all those conducted sounds and v's if you just look at her ct scan so this was her ct film the ct cuts were taken at various level so in the on the about the glottic opening there was a very good airway passage but as you go down the subglottic the tracheal shadow was narrowed down and below beyond that if you see so now this is a very clear cut picture this was a thyroid nodule and the airway or the trachea was compressed over here i hope appreciated the big circle is uh, suggestive of a big personal goiter and uh, the small circle it gives that the area airway is been compromised the line coincides with the marking which gives it is almost 2 mm the narrowest part of the lumen is almost 2 mm and as you go down down the airway diameter was increasing so the distal part of the airway was not obstructed because patient was in strider as it was the ct film was showing the uh, very narrowest part i just wanted and uh, it may turn out to be a difficult intubation so i just screen her airway again uh, there was a unique challenges for airway ultrasound um, uh, routinely we do it in the supine position with head extended but your patient cannot lie down so propped up 90 degree position hand support was given and a screening of the neck was done for uh, trachea so you could at least locate the cricothyroid on membrane in case of any emergency you can at least put in a needle and oxygenate the patient i did that very gently because again the putting the probe will add um, uh, another compression and the patient will not tolerate that much compression as well so it has to be a very gentle maneuver just to highlight about the cricothyroid membrane so as to have a, a something plan b or plan c in our hand pre-op airway ultrasound and as i suggested again the routine versus challenges for the routine position as well as the sitting position so this was really uh, not a very simple case it was having a unique challenge to of the difficult intubation of shared airway and at time patient may land up in can't intubate can't oxygenate scenario even though with a good mouth opening also there was a very uh, positional difficulty at every stage even right from evaluation up to intubation patient preoperatively propped up position was given oxygen was supplemented nebulization was given high risk concern uh, every details were explained letters in detail the case was discussed with the surgeons and uh, team of surgeon and surgeon has given us a red flag sign that tracheostomy cannot be possible in such in this patient cardiothoracic surgeon will be involved and it, uh, he will be standby if at all sternotomy required as per uh, eras protocol nbm order were followed adequate blood was reserved for patient now there was a meticulous and a multidisciplinary planning to tackle this case and a difficult scenario so the two senior consultant cardiac anesthesiologist were there conduct the case cvts surgeon was standby complete team was ready with discussion of the ad all adverse event and the scenario awake nasal fiber optic intubation was planned this was planned in sitting position and that too in a 
right lateral position so that whatever the uh, mass was compressing or deviating the trachea that will fall away from the trachea and you will get a little opening of the lumen patient was prepared accordingly despite of this blind and splot everybody in the team were ready to accept the challenge and post op icu backup and ventilator was kept ready so our plan a was planning proper planning of this airway strategy plan a was awake fiber optic intubation sitting position and right lateral plan b was maximum efforts to take the successful uh, plan a but the ideal in plan b was microlaryngeal tubes and microlaryngoscopy and because the lumen of the tubes are still smaller and you get a proper length so beyond the narrow part of the trachea you may proceed so that was an ideal but we didn't had this in our setup plan c again ideal was front of neck access or ventrain device which is again a jet ventilation device uh, at least you can ventilate it is just like a jet ventilator but front of neck access our surgeon has already raised our hand there would wouldn't be tracheostomy cannot be performed so in a ca uh, can't intubate can't oxygenate scenario cricothyroidectomy was the only aim to um, oxygenate the patient so we proceed with the plan a with uh, completely aware of all the difficulties calories introduction of fiber optic bronchoscope can also cause a complete airway obstruction because the lumen was completely narrowed down at certain point at that point patient may land up in laryngospasm even in the acute respiratory failure airway was prepared according to our plan a nebulization was given with 4% lignocaine oral spray 10% lignocaine nasal patency and uh, xylomethazoline nasal drops were used and ot 2 cc of xylocard was installed in each of the nostril preoperative counseling of the patient and boosting her confidence to tolerate the awake procedure xylocaine jelly was inserted and a nasal airway was used as a dilator we purposefully avoided transtracheal infiltration so as to avoid the risk of bleeding letters were attached position was confirmed emergency card and fib was ready everyone in the team was ready pre medicated with anti saligogus anti emetics small dose of dextromed so as to attenuate the stress response and the fiber optic risk here there is a video i'll play it and later but if you can see sujit sir is holding the fiber optic scope patient is in the bang propped up position almost in and given a right lateral position so that the mass falls away and here you can see uh, till that time sir had reached up to the glottic opening monitors and everything was ready as we have not given transtracheal so cholanesis was infiltrated additional this is the narrowest part i hope you can appreciate so this one was the narrowest part airway purna obstruct hona rahe yes so this is up to the carina they have passed the tube very well and very skillfully up to the carina you can hear the clapping as well in the surrounding our surgeon giving us guidelines as far as it is ventilated no problem so you can see the ventilation we can get the etco2 on the monitor small dose a liquid doses of propofol given patient been made supine i have kept the video unedited so that we can come to know the ot scenario and how the team work worked very well over here now across the difficulty we could have anticipated that patient may have a choking sensation when there is a narrowest part of the lumen and you are passing the fiber optic bronchoscope so there is a complete choking or complete block of the airway passage at that time patient may land up in the cardio respiratory arrest sometimes unrecognized anatomy you may come across sometimes there may be a contamination of an aspiration sometimes there may be a difficulty in railroading the tube found that the there are hypertrophic turbinates and you can at least put in the tube till the oropharynx and then proceed with the fiber optics so the whatever the jiggling is there in the cell passage that can be avoided inadequate timing of induction even if for a longer time as uh, you have seen in the video immediately sir told ki madam please give some or allocates of propofol so there was some some sedation supplementation was given if there is a, a very time lag in induction again patient will be very restless and very agitated so intraoperatively once the tube was secured till the carina it should go it should pass beyond the obstruction then only ventilation started it was proceed with further inhalation as well as analgesic agents and muscle relaxant was added surgery wise again this was a major crux of the case to proceed once the patient airway was secured then surgery had to be a little simple surgeon he took the cervical incision and tried to remove the retrosternal goiter through the cervical incision so luckily they did not required sternotomy and there was a very minimal blood loss now whenever we come to the dictum that is a difficult intubation that is a dictum it will be having a difficult extubation so extubation needs to be properly planned tracheomalacia hyperkalemia and secondary airway obstruction during expiration were expected difficulties in the extubation the ideal scenario patient was supposed to be extubated after 24 hours and elect 
effectively ventilated till then to be extubated with the airway exchange catheter in situ. But again, uh, with the confidence of our surgical team, our surgeon had and uh, told us to please extubate and within four hours, patient will not have any tracheomalacia as there was less handling of the trachea intraoperatively. And now the dynamic city uh, of the obstruction has been removed so we can secure front of neck access post extubation. So we extubated the patient after four hours. Patient was stable hemodynamically, fully awake and with a very good voice after extubation. So there was no recurrent laryngeal nerve injury as well. Pain was taken care of with multimodal analgesic system. Patient was shifted to ICU and then to next day to the room and patient went home walking on seventh day. So to summarize studies, there are very limited studies about retrosternal goiter. At all you get, you there are only few case reports and one of the study where they have given a 22 cases retrosternal goiter case series. Proper evaluation, proper discussion and knowing the loopholes and, and working on it will is the key to the success. Getting expertise in newer and newer gadgets as Sujit sir rightly said and gathering information from imaging, more and more information from the imaging techniques helped us analyze our path. In our case, we preferred awake fiber optic intubation so that to so as to preserve the airway reflex and patient as patient was in respiratory distress. Fully aware of the consensus, visible fiber optic cope may cause a complete airway obstruction of tracheal lumen. We may land up in a can't intubate, can't oxygenate scenario and later on cardiorespiratory arrest. With this multidisciplinary approach and a good team, uh, we managed the case very critical scenario and we anticipated the difficulty in the airway and tackle with a proper airway strategy planning. To anticipate this airway and strategizing the airway as per the patient, for the place and to acquire the realistic approach rather than the idealistic approach. In case of retrosternal goiter, failure of one plan in the airway management, the major paradigm is to achieve oxygenation and ventilation rather than tracheal intubation. Thank you very much. This is our excellent team who managed the case very well. Thank you.